What you're looking at here is a 60 millimeter refractor telescope from SV Boney. Is it any good? Well, let's take a closer look. Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, what we've got here is a uh, little 60 millimeter refractor, kindly sent to me by uh, Retivitz slash SV Boney. Uh, to have a look at. Uh, so what have we got? Uh, well, it's a 60 mil of aperture. It's a 400 millimeter focal length, which gives it about a 6.6 .6, uh, uh, focal ratio. Um, you've supplied with a little finder scope. Also provided with a telescope is a little correctional prism, um, which is what that'll do is for daytime use, it'll turn everything the right way. Instead of it being uh, flipped back to front, left and right, or disorientated, this will put everything right. Um, it's applied on a uh, full side tripod, um, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> So, what's this thing like? Um, does it work? Does it, can you see things through it? Well, of course you can. It's absolutely brilliant, to be honest. I was so surprised. Uh, don't be put off by uh, its first appearance of this uh, plasticky appearance. At first glance, when you pick it up, you could put it in the category of being a toy telescope. It's far from being a toy telescope. This is a proper scientific little instrument. It's great. Um, now, the optics in this thing, um, if I just spin it round, uh, if this is wobbling all over the place, it's because I've actually raised it up a little bit, uh, just so it gets on to uh, get it in shot, basically. And it's not on a very good foundation. <laughs> but as you can see, we've got a, a nice 60 millimeter objective there. Inside the tube, it's lovely, it's nicely blackened, um, I was pleased to see. Um, it also has in the tube a few baffles. Uh, now what baffles do is they help prevent light from scattering around and losing a bit of the quality of the image, um, which is which is quite, quite good uh, to have it. But like I say, it's nicely blackened on the inside. Um, now, the uh, finder scope it comes with. Um, this ideally, now usually these little finder scopes uh, that come on these telescopes are pretty useless, to be honest. Uh, but on this one, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, I still would advise upgrading this to something like a red dot finder, an electronic red dot finder. Um, it is okay, but it's just that little bit too small. Um, it's kind of a little bit tight, especially for my big head, to, to get in and actually, uh, you know, uh, especially if you've got some attachments up here, like a phone adapter or something like that. Um, but that's to be expected for this sort of price range. The other thing it comes supplied with is one um, Kellner eyepiece. Um, again, these could do with upgrading, but you know, that is the same for any telescope of this price range. They either come with these Kellners, uh, sometimes modified Acromats, <coughs> excuse me, which are quite popular today, uh, they're supplied with telescopes, but uh, they really could do with upgrading. And as soon as I put a better eyepiece in this thing, the difference was night and day, really. Um, now, the telescope uh, will provide up to uh, around about 120 times magnification, but you are going to need added accessories to get you up to that magnification, such as Barlow's, um, a, 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 you know, a stronger eyepiece, or like maybe a 12 millimeter eyepiece or something like that, um, to, to get you up to them uh, kind of magnifications. Now, what can you see with this thing? Well, pretty much the same as you can see with any telescope, really, except it's going to be a lot smaller and a lot dimmer. Well, I say, same as any telescope, to the, to the um, you are limited. Of course, you're going to be limited. It's only got 60 millimeters of aperture. But I always say, no matter how small your telescope is, if you take it to proper dark skies, some dark locations, it's like adding three, four inches of aperture to any telescope. The difference is phenomenal. Um, 
but uh, the moon through this is absolutely fantastic you can see uh, lots of detail it's a lovely crisp uh, image of the moon um, I shall throw some pictures up as I'm talking of uh, something now what I don't like to do um, is put a camera on this and point it and show you what it's like the reason why uh, telescope manufacturers and people like me don't like doing that is because a camera will never ever give you the true um, image quality of what you can actually see with your own eyes um, it really it really doesn't do um, any any justice at all uh, so that's why I don't really like showing photographs I don't like putting cameras up to telescopes or anything like that um, I once heard a good analogy of this um, I can't remember where it was from and it's a bit like if you see somebody uh, taking a selfie say on top of a mountain or something Mount Everest all right and it's a beautiful photograph yeah it's a beautiful photograph but you cannot experience what it would be like to actually be there you know and see these things it's um so so that's that's where i'm trying to come from here um so what about the planets um well it's certainly going to show you uh, the galilean moons around jupiter you will work out the ring structure on saturn you're not going to see incredible amounts of detail in the planets it's only a small telescope like i say you can boost up the power of these things by adding barlows and uh, additional eyepieces but the problem comes then is whenever you introduce power you are introducing everything is magnified as in vibrations so every touch of the telescope and it's going to be wobbling like crazy not only that when you increase power you also get a narrower field of view and um, as you all know we live on a spinning ball and uh, to keep that target in the field of view is going to be a bit of a challenge and it's always a good idea to be modest with this and, and, and be realistic and just get that sweet spot where you're seeing enough details with you, but not too much, if you get what I mean. If you start pushing any telescope, um, the image will just become blurred, it'll become hard to focus and, and all the things I've just said. Quick, work on, uh, quick word on some of the accessories that you get. Now, this um, little uh, correctional uh, prism that you get in the end is actually quite reasonably qual good quality. I was uh, pleasantly surprised with this. Now this is great for terrestrial viewing for the daytime like I say uh, lo looking around um, everything will move the right way. I don't know if you've tried looking through a telescope in the daytime it can be a bit disorientating and especially if you I don't know looking at a bird the bird hops to the left and you turn to the left and everything turns right. <laughs> you can, it's like whoa <laughs> but with one of these um, it, it corrects all that and they're great for that. I wouldn't advise using it for astronomy though. Now the reason why is because glass is like a sponge to light whenever light goes through glass it sucks some of the light out of it it scatters it it loses it around the edges and so um, putting light through this prism you're going to be losing some of the brightness and with this being only 60 millimeters of aperture you're going to need every bit of light grasp you can get so just uh, upgrading this to a uh, normal mirror uh, type diagonal where it's just reflecting light instead of light having to pass through something is uh, strongly recommended uh, so leave this for daytime use um, and just get a uh, mirror diagonal for uh, nighttime use. Now, if you haven't got a mirror diagonal, what you can do is you can just put uh, your eyepiece straight in uh, into the telescope. You may find that you have to really rack out the uh, focusing a little bit when you do do this because <clears throat> it does alter the focal length a little bit uh, as, as the light passes through C. Uh, but you, this is another way that you can observe. Um, the only downside to this, obviously, it can be a, a little bit awkward on uh, getting down. You need quite a high tripod um, to, to, to get to comfortable uh, viewing positions. But of course, you could just simply get a chair, sit down with a chair. I like to do that often. I'm getting a bit lazy in my old age. <laughs> Now, um, so that's all the good things about this. Um, oh, another thing. I just want to talk a little bit about what um, 
refractors suffer from and that is a thing called chromatic aberration now that just simply means all the um, the, the the light the, the color of the light it doesn't quite focus to a point instead of it being coming through the tube and focusing like that it comes more like that and that means you sometimes can get a red green purple hue around stars and brighter objects now I was incredibly surprised with this telescope that there is very minimal achromatic aberration and to uh, a newbie to a newbie to the hobby you're not going to notice it you are simply not going to notice it it is not going to uh, um, affect your views at all really really impressed with that i did a good daytime test against uh, trees uh, a good test for that is any bright object with uh, or any good contrast like trees against a bright uh, sky and have a look and you'll just see like a rainbow effect sometimes going around that's chromatic aberration don't worry there's nothing wrong with your telescope um, it's worse in some telescopes than the others and it's all down to the quality of the optics and like i say the quality of the optics in this are pretty good for the money Talking about that, how much does this thing cost? Um, it's retailing around about £80 uh, at the minute. And like I say, you get the telescope tube, you get the tripod, uh, a Kellner eyepiece, the finder scope, and your correctional diagonal, which we'll put back in, actually. Now, so there are the good things of this thing. What's the bad things? <laughs> well... It's the thing it's mounted on, this tripod. Now, if I lift it up like that. Now, <laughs> it kind of, I'm laughing, but it kind of infuriates me a little bit, this. Why on earth do telescope suppliers put such a nice little instrument like this on such a shoddy, useless, and I do mean useless, piece of junk like these tripods are? please 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 telescope manufacturers stop doing this you're not doing yourselves any favor and you're certainly not doing the community any favor i could not i mean in all my experience of of being under the stars could not get anything in the field of view with this i can't even call it a tripod it's it's honestly guys it's useless um and and it's not just sv bony that do this there's a lot of manufacturers that just put good optical tubes on these things now one of the most important things of a telescope apart from aperture and good optics is a good solid mount if you've never used a telescope before or you may have already found this out any slightest little movement and that you just got no chance of seeing anything now when i first took this out and i did manage to finally find the moon <laughs> that has something as big as bright and that uh, as that um it was just i mean if a fly landed on this the image was like this it's it is terrible guys it is really bad and where the problem comes is this can you hear that if i put the microphone up can you hear that stickiness and this is off i mean i've not got this tightened up hardly any and if i undo this anymore that's going to happen okay it's sticky it's jerky it's horrible and no matter how much <laughs> faffing around to try and make this thing right i don't think you're ever going to do it now my advice for you if you've got one of these type of cheap nasty tripods is to just simply upgrade it buy a better tripod um you can pick one up you know relatively cheap these days well i'll tell you that you can buy these tripods i've seen them and they retail round about seven pounds that just shows you the the trash that these things are mounted on um and it really really is a shame because this telescope is a lovely little telescope like i say don't be put off by this plasticky appearance now i know um a few uh, i like to call them snobs out there i'll say this is a bunch of trash and those people can go and sling the rock as far as i'm concerned um it's just equipment snobbery all right you do not you simply do not have to pay 
astronomical prices for good quality images uh, so don't listen to anybody that says oh i want to chess v bony we are barge pole which i've heard quite a lot and um it, it infuriates me it really does it's nothing but snobbery um equipment snobbery and i just can't stand that kind of behavior it irritates me um so um what else can we say about this thing uh, yeah, I've mentioned the finder, haven't I? Now, this little finder scope, it is an optical finder. Um, it has a crosshair in it, a little bit like a gun sight. Um, and I was really impressed with this, <laughs> to, to say. I thought it was going to be totally useless. Um, it's a 5 by 20 I think. A 5 by 20 finder. Have I got my glasses? Got my notes here. Oh, yeah, also it comes in, uh, obviously, you've got your little instruction book. Let me just look at the spec sheet here. The finder scope, yeah, it's a 5 by 24 so, uh, oh yes, and it's all fully multi-coated as well. The, the optics are fully multi-coated. Um, but yeah, it, 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 the eyepiece and the finder and the tripod. <laughs> but let's just talk about the optical, the optical side of it. Uh, the, uh, the, the eyepieces and the finder definitely could probably do with an upgrade. But like I say... It's not useless. Um, it, it's um, I, I, as you can see, it's still on here. I haven't replaced it for a red dot, um, and I used it, and it found it found things pretty well. Now, if you do happen to have one, and it's been actually it's been a, such a long time, and I do feel sorry for anybody that has got one of these type of uh, Altas camera tripods. Okay, these cheap ones I'm talking about. It's been a long time since I've used um, a tripod as bad as this. I mean, I've been spoiled a little bit uh, by using decent um, Altaz mounts and uh, Equatorial mounts. And I just forgot how bad these things are. It's to the point of being as bad as being a hobby killer. Um, and I, I really do mean that. Um, like I say, with all my experience, I struggled like hell to get anything in the field of view with this tripod. But one thing you can do, just to ease things, I haven't done it to this yet. Well, that's because I'll probably not be using it again. Um, is to uh, get a pencil, all right? Just, just an, an ordinary pencil, get something rough and a piece of paper and get a load of carbon fiber, like rub the pencil on, on something rub and get a nice little pile of uh, pencil dust, if you like. Well, that's carbon fiber. Get yourself a little brush, loosen everything off and brush this carbon powder in all the bits that have friction on the moving. What you'll find with that is it'll take away, I'm not taking it all away, but it'll certainly make the telescope move a lot smoother. So that's one little tip you can do. Uh, I wouldn't use greasers and stuff like that. You never know. Um, I've never personally used greasers. Maybe lithium grease might be okay. Uh, to um, loosen it up a bit. But what I've found is definitely carbon fiber, uh, not carbon, I keep saying carbon fiber, don't I? I don't mean carbon fiber, I mean carbon dust. <laughs> That's what I mean, pencil dust. <laughs> now, another thing that really took me by surprise with this little scope um, was, um, if I just rag this in again, is this little addition on the end here. If I spin this round, this, this uh, so blo I'm blown away by this. If we take this off, you can actually see what we've got here is an actual compression ring uh, fitting. Um, it's like a little brass ring that that uh, and, and I always plug these. I always say get one of these if you can get an adapter. So get one of these. The, the, the fantastic. Uh, they don't mark or gouge all your eyepieces up like these little thumb screws do, and that is uh, really surprising on a telescope of this price range. You usually only get compression ring fittings on uh, telescopes, you know, of uh, a lot more expensive than this. So that little addition, 10 points for that SV Boney. I like that a lot. So apart from uh, what I've already mentioned about the tripod and things like this, this is a great little scope and it's well worth your 70 or 80 pounds uh, hard earned money. Um, like I say, it's suitable for the daytime and nighttime use. Now, is it suitable for kids? Uh, a lot of people always ask this, and I always say, well, anything for children is classed as a toy, isn't it, really? And this certainly isn't a toy. Um, if it's, it's 
will be good for kids yes but i always say you know um up to a certain age you do need parental adv advice and care with with these things um, especially if they're using it in the daytime um, telescopes can be incredibly dangerous in the daytime for that big bright light that's up in the sky um, you know if, if a small kid just turns oh and what the sun looks like then uh, and it has happened in the past all right uh, so yes it's suitable for children but always with um, uh, parental advice until a certain age um, that's that's what i would say there the other thing about this telescope of course is it's super portable i mean it, it, it weighs virtually nothing now that's a good thing and it's also uh, a bad thing in a way uh, because you do need a little bit of weight now with all these type of telescopes that come on these lightweight tripods even if it's a slightly better one than this i always recommend uh, if i just open it up properly adding some weight here okay just like a house brick in a carrier bag anything like that all right not too heavy because obviously you can you could damage the the mount but just just adding some weight and lowering the center of gravity really sturdies these things up um, and makes them a lot more stable um, a lot less chance of blowing over i mean the first time i took this out um, it was a nice clear night but it was quite blustery and uh well i've said it was a nice clear night it was patchy it was on and off and uh, a bit of cloud come over and i thought right i'll go in and have a cup of tea and I, as i was sat drinking my cup of tea I, I i heard the wind gusting about and i thought i better bring that telescope in because i was scared of it actually blowing over <laughs> that's how lightweight this thing is but um but i suppose i'm being a little bit critical on that um the the all these little telescopes are lightweight and they come with that but like i say just just adding that little bit of weight to uh, lower the center of gravity so they're not so much top heavy um is something i would recommend doing so that's about all i can say about this would i recommend it absolutely 100 percent yes it's a great little starter scope um it, it will show you some lovely as you can see uh, these images i'm putting up um i mean these the stars were nice and sharp very very sharp when i looked at the moon there was very little false color around the moon and that is the ultimate test uh, for any refractor is to look at the moon and just look around the edges and see if you can see any fringing of color and more than likely you will do if it's a refracting telescope now there is ways around this um, if you have got a refracting telescope that has got quite a severe um, chromatic aberration you can use filters uh, just a blue a blue green filter something like that will will kind of cancel out any of that uh, any of that false color so there we go folks um the uh, 60 millimeter short tube refractor from sv boney i think it's a great little thing thank you so much to retovitz who sent me this to have a first look at um, i will leave full links in the description of where you can acquire this and uh i think it's i think you get a, a quite a lot a lot of bang for your buck really so there we have it folks the 501p 60 millimeter short tube refractor by sv boney thank you very much to retovix for sending me this uh, to have a first look at it and thank you for watching uh, don't forget to like subscribe share all the rest of it and until the next one take care and i will see you on the next one bye for now